Welcome to Everything EFL. My name's Erin O'Byrne, and I firmly believe that you as a teacher are special, amazing, creative, and passionate. But it's very easy to get burnt out and overwhelmed. With my podcast and my teacher training, I aim to help you avoid burnout and cut down on your prep time so you can unleash your creativity and enjoy your work more mindfully. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. If you're one of my lovely regular listeners, welcome back. If you're a new listener to Everything EFL Podcast, welcome. And I hope you stick around. Although I will say, as per usual, it might be better to go back to episode 104, which is the beginning of my Cornerstones of Learning Challenge. And the idea is that you listen to each episode and you take the challenge at the end of the episode. Very actionable, very achievable, small, no overwhelm. So the idea is to just implement small but powerful changes into your teaching practice that do not overwhelm you. So how's the Cornerstone series going for you so far? Have you done the challenges? Please let me know. I love hearing from you guys. This week we are talking about autonomy, student autonomy. Yes, it overlaps a little bit with the other stuff you've heard, but that's a good thing. Cornerstones don't all stand alone, okay? Now let's just dive straight in and talk about why student autonomy is important. In essence, What we're talking about is promoting independent learning strategies inside the classroom, which can lead to the development of learner autonomy outside the classroom. Learners will take responsibility for how and what they learn. And through reflection and on what and how they learn in class, more on that in the next episode, and being aware of their strengths and weaknesses and asking themselves, how can I take responsibility for my own learning outside the classroom? This will develop as usual. Everything is a process. It takes time. You will reach some students, you might not reach others, but you can implement one or two things to try. And that's all you can do, my gorgeous darling teacher, try. And then just go from there. And you know, some students will respond, some won't. Some might in the future, some might never. But again, as long as you're trying, that is enough. So I just want you to consider this quote that I heard. Language can't be taught, but it can be learned. And I love that. It really makes you think teaching should promote learning. Students should be engaging with the language and you can help facilitate that in class. But what about when you're not there? Now, I know that there are a lot of variables to student autonomy outside the classroom. Um, I only had a conversation today about one of my students who is just working to pay the rent, basically. So they don't have time to watch movies and, and they're so tired, they're not really motivated to either. And I totally get that. But there are things you can do. For example, I had a beginner and their their English was so limited they could barely say anything. But, you know, I did make a suggestion of going to the supermarket and just looking at the the signs and the the fruit and vegetables and things like that. And they didn't realise that that was one way of autonomous learning, you know. Um, Sometimes when you talk to students about learning outside the classroom, they immediately go to opening a book, learning a list of phrasal verbs. No! Now, obviously, my example is, you know, about students in an English speaking country, so I can only talk about my reality. Yours might be different, but the issue is fundamentally the same. Um, Are your students engaged, motivated and autonomous enough to do something outside the classroom that features English? Before we move on, let's just talk about some of the benefits. Obviously, increased motivation. If, you know, there's a choice of what to do outside class, students can choose what to do outside class. They can go at their own pace and do something they actually enjoy. And this can lead to, you know, higher levels of achievement. They're actually engaging with the language. It's active learning. It's not passive. It's not just like sitting in a classroom and opening a course book. You know, they come to class to do that. What can they do outside? It's very empowering, again, with the choice. They have the control over what they learn. And it's explorative. When they are engaged with the language, they could go down a rabbit hole. I mean, have you ever watched TikTok or YouTube and then suddenly an hour's gone by and you have no flipping idea where it's gone? And also there could be that feel good factor. I achieved something today and I understood 80% of it. Amazing. But I just want to digress a little bit. Well, not even digress, just sidestep. And let's start with you, my darling teacher. Um, I'm pretty sure that every single teacher listens 
has been or is a student of another language. I learned German for a long time, haven't for ages, um, I'm not going to lie, and um, I'm honestly finding it hard to motivate myself. I downloaded a couple of podcasts, news in slow German, and postcards from something where the guy speaks super slowly, like this, reading a postcard, and then he repeats it at a natural speed. Great for me. Thought to myself, I'll do it every day. I've done it twice in the last two weeks, but you know what? I've done it, so that's good. Anyway, that was definitely a digression. Um, so if you are a non-native speaker of English or if you've ever learned another language, question for you or for your students, what do you do to improve your English or the other language you're learning? Anything? How consistent are you? These are not judgment questions. I'm not asking them to make you feel bad. Um, but, you know, the next question is, if, if you're not consistent and you're not doing much or in your mind enough, why not? Is it time? Um, I think that's probably the most common issue for yourself and possibly for your students as well, depending. Um, time and headspace. But I suppose thinking about it like that might put us in the frame of mind of our students and understand why maybe they don't do as much as we would like them to do outside the class. So what kind of stuff are your students into? Do you know? If not, that's a conversation you can have with them. Um, and I think that's a great way to begin with, um, you know, encouraging them to do stuff outside of class, but also giving them engaging stuff to do inside of class. So here are just a few more ideas. I've mentioned one or two already. And there's nothing groundbreaking here, but, I, you know, the key is consistency. Think about how you do things. And I'm not necessarily telling you to prep anything extra, but maybe just sort of a small change in mindset and planning and take sort of the following things into account as well. So do you have a year round group? I would argue it's possibly easier because you have slightly longer to train them. Um, in the shorter term with kind of rolling um, enrollments, which I deal with, you have to be consistent most definitely so that the new students coming to class have the older students who can sort of take them under their wing and, and show them how you do things. Asking the class what they want to learn is great as well because it gives them that element of choice. Now, obviously, if you have a curriculum, this isn't always possible. But how about, let's say, that final 10 minutes on a Friday or something like that? Um, can they give you something uh, to do, like a game, a song, uh, a TikTok video they like um, in advance? And then maybe you can make some questions or have a quiz. Anything learner generated can be fantastic. Autonomy over choice. If you want to have a full rundown of that, about choice, go and listen to episode 107, Choice. It's part of the cornerstones of learning. And, um, you know, it just encourages students in different ways to make their own decisions. And this engages them a little bit more. Today, for example, um, just a really simple example. I played this online game where the students have to choose vowels or consonants and put them in a random like letter generator. Um, and the most unengaged student in the whole class made the decisions for the group. He was like, vowel, vowel, consonant, consonant, because he had autonomy over the game. OK, um, and again, this is just a really small example. And I'm not saying you have to do this or you have to play this game, but it just shows you that just giving that little bit of choice just in that sort of 10, 15 minute window just got that student's attention. It was amazing. It was the most I'd got out from the whole freaking week. Like I said, more examples in episode 107. And as mentioned in episode 103, leadership, you know, can you provide students with the opportunity to lead in class? Listen to the episode for lots of ideas. Um, you know, putting that together with choice, uh, we have voice, choice and voice. These two things just create so much autonomy for your students. Now, autonomy can lead to taking risks, and this can even be for some students answering a question when they're not 100% sure they're correct. This is okay for some, terrifying for others. Thinking about, say, presenting in front of the class, again, terrifying for some, meh, for others. But I think the whole idea here is to basically be very explicit about making mistakes being a part of learning. And you can use quotes, you can use your own experiences, a foolish, silly story when you learn a language. Did you say something completely wrong? Was there a, a misunderstanding when hilarity prevailed? And you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with autonomy? Well, the more vulnerable you can be and the more stories you can share and you know, that, that kind of consistent key message of it's okay to make mistakes. If students decide, okay, I'm going to answer even if I'm not sure. I would argue that is an autonomous decision they're making. 
One thing you can do, it's really simple, is just start the lesson with a little discussion. Is it okay to make mistakes? Why? And then that's how you can introduce the whole process thing, because I think I've said this before, but we're often very concerned and students are concerned with the product, the end result, the exam or the test or whatever. But we never stop to really consider the process. And we're definitely going to talk about that next week uh, or the week after next with my reflection episode. But again, keep that message explicit. Can you give your students group work or pair work where they make their own decisions, they create something, they solve a problem together, something that involves a little bit of critical thinking? This all helps to develop a more independent kind of mindset. And again, taking that initiative kind of mindset. So like I said, nothing too rocket sciencey there, but again, I'm going to say it, consistency is the key. Keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Now, let's talk about outside of class. Um, I would recommend not having this conversation with your students immediately. Do the building, the community work, trust work, trying to build a little bit of autonomy inside the classroom. And then you can start talking about what's outside of class for them. And the exciting thing here is there is just, there's so much available at their fingertips now than there was even 10 years ago. You know, things are changing constantly. English is everywhere. It's mainstream. Now, in episode 81, I spoke to the lovely Jason Levine, who is, in his own words, a teacher, trainer, and knowledge entertainer. You might know him as Fluency MC. His irregular verb rap on YouTube is very, very popular. And he said that the ones who are already hooked on the language, it's kind of incidental. So, for example, they might be really into online video games and they need English to communicate, or they're really into an English speaking singer or totally into like the DC or the Marvel universe or something like that. And of course, you know, you can encourage them to do A, B and C, but I think even better than that is peer recommendations. So think about books, anime, graphic novels, video games, TikTokers, songs. As long as it's not a grammar or a vocabulary book, you know, you can have little recommendation sessions every week or every couple of weeks where all of them or some of them can share what they've already watched and recommend it to the group. So report to each other in groups. What, what, what have you watched this week? What have you read? What have you done? Um, you could put it on the whiteboard. You could have it on Padlet or a sh shared platform and students have to choose another one, something they haven't done and do it by next week or they can choose when or something like that. And then the next time you do it, they, they report back. Now, I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago for Modern Foreign Languages presenting and I, uh, it was for like German, Irish, Spanish, French, all kinds of languages. Um, and I said to them, you know, do you know who's on TikTok in the language that you teach? And every single one of them shook their heads. And I think like this is a really valuable resource that you, you can very easily miss out on. Now, I'm not a TikToker, okay? Um, it's just another social media platform is too much for me. Um, I had to actually delete the app because I did spend hours scrolling and I was like, no, this is not who I want to be. But have a little look. Who's on there? And, you know, or if you don't know, again, ask your students who's on TikTok, who are you watching, who are you listening to, and have a little look. Maybe there's something you can use in your classroom, okay? But again, if you don't know, this is a conversation to have with your students. It's going to help you get to know them. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, go back to episode 73 called Small Victories, uh, Reflection and Goal Setting. So you can um, put a bit more structure into kind of the recommendations and then sort of the reporting back of that and keeping it going. So my challenge for you today is have a session in class or maybe do a, a survey, you know, a Google survey, whatever suits your class, your lesson time, etc, etc. Find out what your students are watching, playing, listening to if you don't already know. And then figure out how can you have a recommendation session, maybe in small groups, and how can you share that information. And again, taking into account the time you have. Okay. Uh, the last one I did, um, I just put them in groups and then I just did an open feedback where I put some things on the board un under sections like video games, movies, series, music, that kind of thing. And we had a couple of um, suggestions for each one. And then I said, OK, guys, have a look at the board, decide what you'd like to do. And then this week I'm going to have a little reporting back session just to see or probably to remind them because <laughs> uh, I think a lot of them have forgotten. But again, like I said, consistency, if I do this every week. Uh, maybe I'll start seeing some results. 
And also another little extra thing you could squeeze in when you're doing these recommendation sessions is, you know, could you squeeze in a little bit of language? Like uh, what springs to mind? I recommend ing or I recommend a noun because uh, that is a structure that's very often misused. Or something just really simple like I saw or I played this great movie, game, whatever. Um, you know, you could write a few structures or, or sentence frames on the board to help your students just to start the discussion a little bit. There's no harm in helping them. And a little extra challenge for you, if you feel like you need to brush up on whatever language you're learning, ask yourself, you know, can you squeeze in something, maybe a, a podcast or a, a YouTube video? Again, thinking about yourself, how much time and headspace and energy do you have? When are your energy levels high or low? So guys, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of this. As per usual, let me know about the challenge. Um, let me know about anything um, going on in your life. I love talking to you guys and giving you support. So DM me on my socials. Everything is in the show notes. Subscribe to my Breathe Easy Teacher newsletter if you haven't already. And subscribe to everything EFL podcast if you haven't already. Tell your colleagues about me. Talk me up in your staff room. Share any of my posts on, on the social media. And take care of yourselves. Have a peaceful week and share the love. Bye. <laughs>